Well, what's up guys and welcome to today's vlog. Now, if you watched yesterday's video, you know that Noah was sick. He is feeling a lot better, but I'm gonna take one more day to hang out with him and just make sure that he's okay. But I do have a topic up that I do wanna talk about and I've been wanting to make this video for a little bit, so I thought today would be the perfect day. So let's get into it. So if you are familiar with my channel, you know that there's a lot of different things I love. I love puzzles, I love languages, and I discuss all those freely on this channel and do videos of solving cubes or speaking in languages, or one specific language, um, and that uh, is something that I enjoy. So today I want to talk for a brief minute about why I chose Esperanto and why learning a constructed language isn't necessarily a bad thing. So background, I've talked about this a lot. Um, part of the reason I chose Esperanto is because I've all, like one of my bucket list items, probably a top 10 bucket list item, is I want to be bilingual. I don't care what language it's in, I just want to be bilingual. And the problem is I've found stuff that I enjoy, but nothing that I've enjoyed to the point of wanting to just immerse myself and fully learn. Um, I've studied, here's the languages that I've studied and never um, got anywhere. Well, all right, so Spanish is probably my best language, um, and I'm okay in that. Not great. I can hold very, very basic conversations about, like, me enjoying, like, orange juice and stuff and, like, milk. So, like, nothing really super credible. Um, and then next would probably be... Probably not as much anymore, but I have studied Japanese, and I was pretty solid in Japanese, actually, for a while, and then I just stopped speaking it, and then... Well, you know the rest. Um, and then uh, other languages I've studied are Korean, Vietnamese, Russian, French. Um, I've never actually messed with Italian, but I've messed with uh, German. Um, and then I've tried to mess around with like Bulgarian, um, Welsh. Uh, what else have I studied? Polish for a while. Love Polish. Polish people rule and they're always super friendly. Um, same with Vietnamese. Uh, and then like, uh, did I say Russian? I think so. Um, Hungarian. You get the point. Studied a bunch of different stuff um, and I just never could make leeway into anything. And that's where Esperanto came in. I actually was introduced to it by a buddy of mine named Evan, and he said, hey, you know, you're struggling learning languages, and that's totally fine. He said, but part of the issue with learning languages is you have to learn how to learn a language. He said, you should try Esperanto, man. Esperanto is super easy. There's no irregular verbs. There's none of that stuff. The conjugations are easy because each tense just has a conjugation. You don't have to conjugate it towards each pronoun. He was like, so you should give it a shot and see if that can help you out. So I started learning it, I went to the Duo, actually um, I got online and I saw that the Duolingo course had just been uh, uploaded, which kind of worked out perfectly because he was just talking about that. And I do learn easier through a game-like way versus just sitting and studying flashcards and stuff like that. So I gave it a shot and the thing that impressed me the most about it was how, and I hate to say easy because it is still learning a language, but I love the idea of how easy it was. Like the first day I was making coherent sentences um, and understanding like grammar rules because there's only 16 grammar rules. Um, and so it kind of just built on that. Like basically the, the that first day being able to go ahead and speak from the beginning made me say, well, what happens if I study this another day? And what happens if I study this another day? And every day I got better. Now I've taken time off from Esperanto here and there, obviously, because I've been studying it for about a year and I'm not anywhere near, and I hate to use the F word here, but fluent. Um, but um, how easy it was and how easy it was to obtain the information of vocabulary and how easy the vocabulary was to work, it made me want to work harder at it and so that's kind of where it came in. So ultimately I chose Esperanto because it's a perfect language to learn, it's super easy to learn and stuff like that. So this next part I'm going to get into why learn a constructed language because the problem is people are like, well there's not a lot of people that speak constructed languages and stuff. Esperanto got my attention because there's over 2 million speakers of it worldwide, probably more now. Well, there's over, I think we, they just hit over a million learners on Duolingo, so that number is probably closer to 3 million now, um, if not more. But constructed languages are constructed, uh, that's a stupid statement, but like they are constructed, they're not man-made, or they're not a natural growing language, but the point is, if it's constructed and someone's learning it, it's because they want to. The problem that I've always ran into in languages when I'm studying Spanish or when I'm studying anything like that, if I go into a Mexican restaurant and um, somebody says something and I'm just like, hola, como esta, right? Um, it's such a common thing that people are just like, oh, cool, whatever, yeah, no, uh, uh, you know, bien, too, whatever. Like, and it's not really a big deal. And, and it's not that I want it to be a big deal, but it's like, okay, all right, Here, here's the only way I know how to break it down. You watching this, probably, I would say 99% of the people watching this are native English speakers. So if somebody comes to you who is 
any other na native speaker that's not English, if they come and speak to you, do you get excited? Do you say, oh my God, this guy speaks English. Let's speak English together, right? Like you may want to help and that's perfectly fine. But I mean, like you don't find, it's not exciting to you because it's something you've done your entire life. That's the difference in a constructed language. Every person that I talk to who speaks Esperanto is just as excited as I am because it's something they had to learn and it's something they're passionate about. I speak English. I'm not passionate about it. I just happen to speak it as my native language. You see what I'm saying? Versus Esperanto I'm passionate about, it's something that I'm learning. Now there are cases where people have studied, there's actually a really famous case of a guy studying and then literally just stopping for no reason. There's actually a word in Esperanto called that. but. The point is, is that you meet people who love what they are doing, you love what you're doing, and so it makes you connect and bond. So the other thing is, hey, constructed languages, is there a point in learning it? And, or that's what we're on. And the thing is, I speak to more Esperanto speakers daily than I speak to any other language speakers pretty much on a monthly basis. I can speak more because, and it's because you seek each other out and you want to speak in that language. Sometimes a Spanish person might not be available, but you speak to an Esperanto, uh, Esperantisto, they're going to be like, yes, let's get together, let's speak, and let's do that regularly so we can make ourselves better. So that's my other argument for constructed languages. I've actually really gotten into constructed languages lately. I've thought about maybe just becoming a constructed linguist. Like I've learned Esperanto fairly decent. Maybe I could learn high vol of Valerian or like Elvish or... God forbid I'd try to learn Klingon. I don't mean that negatively towards Klingon, but my God, what a difficult language. But yeah, it's, it's just, like I said, the, to me, the main benefit is the people you're speaking to are all just as excited to be speaking it as you are. It's not, you're not annoying somebody, but, uh, you know, you know, you go to a Mexican restaurant and somebody's trying to work, it's not you annoying them. And, and, I, and I don't mean that negatively. Like my buddy Moses goes out and does this all the time, but he also speaks like Chinese and stuff like that. And you get a little bit more different of a reaction of people wanting to speak if you're super different like if I were to go speak Chinese to somebody they'd probably be like whoa okay what's going on here but you know what I mean like if I speak to uh, now okay <laughs> this video is all over the place but if I the odds I guess th that is the point against constructed languages the odds of me finding an Esperanto speaker in the wild <laughs> that's a, that's a stupid terminology but it is pretty low however there is a guy that speaks esperanto from around here he lives about 45 minutes away from me um his name is kyle he speaks esperanto so even in a small area like this i have found a speaker that i can meet with sometime and again magic of the internet facebook you can speak whenever you want so i hope you got something out of this video uh this isn't a video saying hey you should totally go learn esperanto but if it's something you want to do feel free i will totally speak to you in esperanto um i don't mind that um, but it's more so just about why I chose Esperanto, how it can help, because again, it's super easy and it's taught me more so how to, like, I've learned languages before, but not to the extent that I've learned Esperanto. So it's taught me how to further my language learning, um, because again, learning a language, you have to learn how to learn a language. So you have to learn how to learn. Um, and it's helped me out tremendously with that. And I think that it could benefit anybody, even if you don't really want to speak it all a lot, it can still train your mind to absorb vocabulary and stuff like that. So yeah, it's, it's not me necessarily saying you should totally learn Esperanto, but I just want to give the whys of why somebody would learn something in a, would learn Esperanto or, or any constructed language because there are benefits to it, man. Uh, it can train your brain and you're going to interact with people who are more excited about speaking a language than you are. Um, and it's not just you saying, oh, hey, let's speak the language that you grew up speaking. Like there's always that excitement when it's around. So I hope that makes sense. All right, and I am gonna end this video here. I've rambled for like 30 minutes. I really hope that this is an intelligible video for you guys. I hope you understand it. Um, if you have any comments, questions, anything like that, leave them down below. If you start learning Esperanto, um, feel free to shoot me a message, man. Send me a message on Facebook, anything like that. I'll totally, I'll talk to anybody. We can set up Skype things, anything like that. Um, I don't mind speaking. I love speaking Esperanto, so feel free to hit me up and we can speak. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Like I said, I just wanted to do something short from where Noah was sick yesterday. Just want to make sure he's fully okay. He's perfectly fine right now, but I just want to give it an additional day and we will be back to vlogs tomorrow. Thank you guys, and we'll see you then.